a very warm good evening to all the august audience and our guests who are here with us today it's a beautiful sunday and uh, also marks the pre- uh, or the uh, oral cancer awareness month where i can get along with the uh, sterling cancer hospital foundation for head and neck oncology is organizing the oral cancer e conclave for the entire month we are going to have four sundays which are full of wonderful scientific sessions for the audience and for uh, with uh, with the great academic content as well as great practical learning from prolific onco surgeons who are here with us today on this event and will address us and from whom we will have a wonderful opportunity to learn a lot of things i thank all the partnering organizations and the respective representatives who are here with us today i, I thank bowen and the i can care team for uh, giving me this opportunity to interact with uh, all of you uh, my job is quite simple but it is a difficult to want to introduce dr gauri she has been the lead surgeon from tata memorial hospital she is a professor and surgeon and is in, she's in the field for last almost more than 20 years uh she'll be discussing uh, regarding the changes in the agcc year tradition so lots have happened particularly in head and neck cancers as far as staging of oral cancers is concerned uh may i request uh, dr gauri to take over and start her proceedings without uh, wasting much time thank you yeah uh, good evening everyone and um, thank you very much for having me here thank you dr gupta dr dikruz and uh, the, uh, vikram and the team from i can care for uh, inviting me for this talk um uh, my brief is on talking of staging and interpreting the newer aspects in ajcc 8th edition its clinical implications um i have uh, 15 minutes so i must say that i have taken a small liberty here Uh, seeing that this is uh, basically an oral cancer conclave i'm going to be uh, basically talking on the changes in the 8th edition and the implications in oral cavity cancers only uh, i hope that should be okay um i'm going to start by saying that uh, staging uh, without doubt is um, the bedrock it is what really decides uh, everything that we do in all points of treatment in every cancer now the agcc brought out the 8th edition uh, it published it in 2017 the 7th edition was earlier in 2010 and um, it, as the agcc always does it's very diligent when it brings out a new edition changes in the tnm staging it had 18 expert panels seven cores 420 contributors from 181 institutions 22 countries six continents so everyone was represented in this and only then was a change made in the tnm staging they tried to bring in other factors like comorbidities performance station performance status nutrition depression everything into their tnm staging and actually their vision uh, this time in the 8th edition was to not just have tnm but to have prognostic factors clinical trial stratifications risk assessment models and change it from a population based tnm staging to a more personalized tnm staging so the tnm classification the 8th edition was published in 2017 its uh, implementation was started from 2018 and um uh, really the um the there, there were a lot of changes in head and neck a large bit of it was from the hpv associated cancer of the oropharynx which was staged differently than the oropharyngeal cancers really this has not made too much of a difference to us because um, not too many of our patients are hpv positive the end categories were changed in the nasopharyngeal cancers there were certain changes in the structuring of the chapters of skin cancers salivary mucosal malignancies of the upper aerodigestive tract but the really interesting change uh that they brought about was in the t and n staging of oral cavity cancer something of great interest to us because large part of our practice made majority of our patients and a very common cancer in india is the oral cavity cancer so just to revise a little bit about what was the t staging in the 7th edition in the 7th edition the t staging revolved around t size to 4 more than 4 cm it looked at involvement of adjacent structures bone skin masticator space etc and in tongue cancers it had some certain um, terminologies like ankyloglossia extrinsic muscles involvement of the tongue now these kind of factors factors like ankyloglossia were very subjective i mean some people thought patient had ankyloglossia some thought didn't have 
extrinsic muscle involvement was difficult to define not specific people never knew how to define extrinsic muscle involvement and this used to cause a lot of problem to us in t staging now everybody realized this ankyloglossia extrinsic muscle involvement especially in tongue cancer was basically a surrogate for depth of invasion what it was showing was that depth of invasion when it was more you had extrinsic muscle involvement you had ankyloglossia and what people realized was that depth of invasion was probably a more objective way to try and define these terms rather than extrinsic muscle involvement or, or ankyloglossia now over the last decade what also happened was uh, the differences between depth of invasion and thickness were better defined people understood what was the difference and a lot of literature came in showing depth of invasion as a very very important prognostic factor both for neural metastasis and disease outcomes so people started realizing that depth of invasion seems to be a very important factor for a numerous reasons now adding to that came this study which was the icor study which looked at depth of invasion as an indication for post operative radiotherapy this was what the study was published for we were a part of this study also it was a retrospective analysis of around 1500 patients less than 4 cm per primary oral squamous cancers now what they found in this study was that for every 5 mm increase in the depth of invasion there was a significant increase in the disease specific mortality this is when they realized and we always knew that depth of invasion was a poor prognostic factor but it was always related more with nodal metastasis but if they found that disease specific mortality was also affected and what they did then was they tried to incorporate depth of invasion in the t staging and then this t staging with the depth of invasion was validated in an institutional data set which was the mskcc princess margaret data set and they found there was good hazard discrimination when you included depth of invasion in the test t staging and then the depth of invasion came as one of the important factors in the eighth edition so if you looked at the t category for oral cavity there is no t0 the t0 is eliminated and for every 5 mm increase there is an increase in the depth of there is an increase in the t stage you will also see that you do not have the ankyloglossia the extrinsic muscles of invasion extrinsic muscles of uh, tongue involvement all of that has been removed from the t4 which was very subjective and very difficult to determine now when this depth of invasion came in 2018 as a part of the tnm staging all of us were a little troubled we all decide we all were wondering how do you assess this depth of invasion preoperatively and uh, we all um, thought that it's in the tnm staging it's in the clinical tnm staging so you have to do it before we go ahead for surgery how do we do it the two obvious methods that we had with us was clinical examination and radiology and all of us started putting our fingers into patients mouths and trying to pinch tumors palpating tumors trying to figure out whether we can make out depth of invasion but we have all realized in the last uh, couple of years three years that really uh, trying to find out depth of invasion clinically is not very easy it's not validated it's really difficult to evaluate for gingival buccal cancers alveolar cancers heart palate cancers and for cancers that are in the posterior part of the oral cavity trismus of often prevents accurate examination and this is one of the important implications of depth of invasion in the clinical tnm staging so let's look at what happened with radiology so the three modalities that were described for depth of assessing depth of in, invasion preoperatively was ultrasound ct scan and mri uh quite a few research articles trying to look at these three modalities uh, i'm not going through each of these research articles for want of time i'm just going to give you a summary of radiological assessment for depth of invasion now most literature looks at tumor thickness and not depth of invasion and this is because depth of invasion actually is a pathological term it's not a radiological term at all so they will still report tumor thickness or whatever they think is depth of invasion most of the series looking at radiological preoperative assessment is small and most is in tongue cancers not many is not much of literature available for buccal cancers and gingival buccal tumors all three modalities depending on which paper you read have similar accuracy the though ultrasound seems to have a little lower accuracy 
compared to MRI, some say CT scan is better. But in the whole picture, if you look at the whole picture on radiological assessment, depth of invasion probably best measured in tongue cancers with the use of an MRI. So if you look at radiological assessment, um, you will have to do it with either a CT scan or an MRI. Uh, not very well validated, but that's the best option that you have available because clinical examination is pretty difficult for making out depth of invasion. Now to add to this, this is an interesting paper which looked at uh, do radiologists report the TNM staging in radiology reports for head and neck cancers? <coughs> Excuse me. Now, this was actually conducted in 2016, and this was before this depth of invasion came. They looked at 782 respondents from the United States. Now, even before depth of invasion complicated this, and even in the United States, only 25% of radiologists actually reported the TNM staging in their radiology reports. And many of the critiques of the new TNM staging said that adding depth of invasion is going to further worsen this and radiologists are going to rarely report the TNM staging now. And this is something that practically we also see. We do get radiologists reporting depth of invasion in tongue cancers, but in any other cancers, it's something that we don't report. Now, why we are talking so much about preoperative depth of invasion, the one question that I always ask myself is what is really the need of preoperative depth of invasion? Do I really need to know this preoperative depth of invasion? Of course, it's there in the CTNM staging, but what is the need? Do I check it out in every patient? Now, what we know is depth of invasion predicts nodal metastasis, but in my book, Elective neck dissection is now the standard of care for both early and advanced oral cancers. So I really don't need a predictor of nodal metastasis. So the role of preoperative depth of invasion, yes, you want to know the CTNM staging, but besides that, it's probably to just prognosticate. It helps counsel patients for possible adjuvant therapy. So if you have a depth of invasion that's more than a centimeter preoperatively, you know that this probably is going to be a stage three tumor and this patient will probably require adjuvant therapy. This patient may have higher nodal metastasis, poorer outcomes. Now, the place where the depth of invasion really has a high implication is the pathological TNM. Now, it is here that thicker tumors get upstaged to T2 and T3. And when thicker tumors get upstaged, irrespective of the T size, these patients, more patients will start receiving adjuvant radiotherapy. So depth of invasion really is very important and the TNM staging makes a big difference in the pathological TNM staging. Now, uh, besides depth of invasion, I just want to bring your attention to one more issue in the pathological TNM staging. And that is that superficial erosion of the bone has been removed from the TNM staging. And actually, there is no T stage for superficial bone erosion. Now, this sometimes does become a problem in the pathological T stage. Uh, this is out of experience when you have a patient that comes to you with a histopathology report at the end of your surgery who has a smallish tumor but does have superficial erosion, does not fit into a T3 or previously it used to be a T3 tumor. Now it does not fit. There is no prognostic significance given in the pathological TNM staging for superficial bone erosion. Whether it has prognostic, in the, in a, a prognostic significance or no, we do not know. Uh, but this is one thing that does cause a problem for us sometimes when our patients come to us with superficial bone erosion in their pathology report and the patient still becomes a T1 tumor or a T2 tumor and we don't know whether we need to give these patients adjuvant radiotherapy or not. So depth of invasion, important in the pathological TNM staging. So uh, since the depth of invasion has been incorporated in the TNM staging, a lot of validation of this depth of invasion and the AJCC 8th edition has happened. Numerous studies have come, 10, 15 studies have come looking at whether this depth of invasion, and that's how it should be. Literature should always check when you have a new AJCC uh, uh, edition that's coming. When you have so many editions, so many literature, what I like to do is look at a publication that comes from your own country. This is a wonderful publication that came from Deepak and from the Amrita group. This looked at validation of the eighth edition of the AJCC staging system in early T1, T2 oral squamous cancers. Now, they looked at 441 T1, T2 tumors 
in a 10 year period they reclassified these t1 t2 tumors these were previously classified as t1 t2 the 7th edition they reclassified as per the 8th edition now when you reclassify it's the same group of tumors what happened was 50% of these tumors were upstaged what happened is you got a new stage of these 441 tumors 141 tumors went on to t3 so basically this is the same group of patients but now they have got upstage to 141 and i would like to then introduce you all to a concept concept which is called stage migration now this is one of the very very important implications of a new addition of a tnm staging what happens is your patients all go and do a what is called a stage migration when you reevaluate these patients now what this means is you have to look at the survival differences because of stage migration if you look at the seventh edition in this particular same uh, paper t1 tumors had a five year overall survival of 78% t2 tumors had a five year overall survival of 61% now in the same patients just by adding uh, by reclassifying them on the eighth edition the five year overall survival improved to 87% for t1 tumors it improved to 61% for t2 tumors because a large percentage of patients moved to t3 and their survival became 58% now this is called stage migration and in the new further few years we are going to have new survival statistics for stage 1 to 4 oral cancers and stage migration is going to be an issue and this is an important implication of the tnm staging so to summarize depth of invasion in the eighth edition for every 5 mm increase in depth of invasion it upstages the t stage you have a stage migration of t1 to t2 and from t2 to t3 you have better survivals now for t1 t2 tumors the preoperative estimation of depth of invasion however still remains a challenge clinical examination is very difficult not validated you have to use radiology along with clinical examination that can be between with a ct scan or an mri the pathological tnm is actually where depth of invasion is an important factor to decide a juvent treatment and now in the last 3 years the new t staging has been validated with disease outcome in multiple studies so it seems like a robust um a tnm staging we come to the second part of the change that happened in the tnn staging and that was the extra nodal extension which is eni uh, lymph node metastasis as we know is an important predictor of disease outcomes presence of eni decreases uh, your survival so we all know it's an important factor uh, predicting survival what the eighth edition did was it just added this eni to make the staging system more robust they realized that this is an important predictor an important prognosticator it should not be left out from the staging system and as you can see the n3 got split up into an n3a and n3b the n3a is a, a, a node that's more than 6 cm without eni and an n3b is um, a node that's more than 6 cm with extra nodal extension and you have both clinical and pathological now the evidence for this also came originally from uh, data from the ncdb database which was again validated on the same institutional data from the mskcc princess margaret group they again found good hazard discrimination in most of the stages n stages not all of the stages and then it came into the eighth edition they also defined clinical eni as presence of skin involvement of soft tissue invasion with deep fixation tethering to underlying muscles or adjacent structures or clinical signs of nerve involvement as clinical extra nodal extension this is a little more simpler than clinical depth of invasion it is easier for us to identify though not still um, uh, validated as to how many of these are actually extra nodal extension or no pathological eni they further classified into minor or major uh, this is not in the tnm staging this is only for data collection minor as less than 2 mm major as more than 2 mm if you look at the implications of eni preoperatively uh, basically again to prognosticate and probably help surgeon plan surgery if you know you have eni post operatively it's mandatory to document eni in the pathology report and this is basically for addition of adjuvant chemoradiation for patients with extra nodal extension 
so extra nodal extension didn't really cause too much of a flurry for us we were always reporting extra nodal extension even before tnm came and that was because it had an implication on adjuvant chemo radiation but it's now into the uh, tnm staging so it becomes mandatory to now report it now um, it seems that the tnm staging is doing well and is being well validated but you always have to look at a contrarian view some articles now coming looking at the prognostic performance of the tnm 8 staging which don't say that which say that it's not really very good this is a retrospective validation of 297 patients just published december 2020 which looked at the entire stage this is not just the t stage or the depth of invasion it compared the 7th and 8th edition they looked at it with regard to survival and as you can see there is not too much of a difference between the 7th edition and the 8th edition they said that the overall the 8th edition had better discrimination than the 7th but it was unable to discriminate between stage 3 and 4a and stage 1 and 2 and there are few other articles that have also said that the 8th edition is not absolutely perfect it's difficult to get um a tnm staging that's perfect because there are so many other factors besides t and n m that determine survival they also concluded that the validation of the eighth edition in a larger data set is still required and i think that's work in progress and uh, we have to see how they do but as of today uh, depth of invasion and ene are the main changes in oral cavity cancers in the eighth edition the ctnm clinical tnm uh, is a clinical radio clinical radiological it's not just a clinical it's not just based on clinical examination the implications basically are largely on prognosis two is that depth of invasion causes a lot of stage migration causes a lot of upstaging of disease and a larger percentage of our patients because of this stage migration are going to have increased use of adjuvant treatment and change of adjuvant treatment thank you very much any uh, thank you dr gauri for the nice presentation you have elaborated a lot about the changes in the tnm staging uh, uh, how is it going to affect our clinical practice is time is going to tell us but definitely with addition of chemo radiation and migration of the stage from stage 2 to stage 3 with the increased depth of invasion has made a difference as far as treatment decisions are concerned secondly about the hpv positivity because of uh, uh, we do have two separate sets hpv positive and hpv negative where more of uh, the surgeons are doing laser surgeries and the robotic surgeries are going on for case of tongue and tonsillar tumors particularly for hpv positive tumors where you have an excellent prognosis where you can avoid radiation in these patients for the regions so i thank you and uh, we'll be taking questions in the end so i'll forward to dr uh, dr nandwani thank you